Hello, good morning. I'm going to go live here. I am live. So I'm just going to, um, I'm going to get started on my daily, just a second here. opening mail loudly in the background. Okay. What should I do for my study today? I'm going to try to keep things a little short. I like this one a lot. Simple one too, because I'm I'm going to try to really like keep it down to a two hour session today. Good more good morning, Warren Pixel. Hello, welcome, welcome, GMGM. Five point seven. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. Thank you. Yes, I'm. Uh, I've got some allergies. Sometimes they creep up on me. If anyone wants to join me in the voice chat while I'm working, uh, you can pop onto the Discord. I'm gonna hit the Discord real quick. There's the link, and uh, you know I'm gonna say that I'm going live on uh, Twitter real quick. Technically not Twitter, I know, but it's always Twitter on our hearts, won't it be? Just pulling up uh, older study to use a promo image. Um, oh, I did change the permissions so that everyone can't just join or speak, but I can change it back if you like. Yeah, I was opening it up so that everyone could be able to join and speak um, because we haven't had any issues with it yet, and uh, we can mess with it once it becomes an issue. I think we need to do something about the <laughs> use soundboard is turned off. <laughs> oh, no, thank God. <laughs> That's probably for the best, but uh, yeah, yeah, everyone's been respectful so far. It's been nice, uh, but yeah, we'll we'll put um, put some uh, restrictions in place once it becomes more of an issue. Um, Pete, you yes. were telling me the other day um, that you thought it would be a good idea for me to do like studies or something, but we never actually discussed what you like were suggesting I do. Like, do you mean like I should do value studies every day or what? Um, well, I'm, you know, okay, so, you know, you're saying that you're not sure how to paint, right? Yeah. Not know what do. Not know what do with painting? Yeah. Um, so, like, do you want to take a look at it a little bit? Do you want to take a look at it a little bit today? We'll, we'll take a look at what you got and where you're struggling, and maybe I can give you a little bit of a, a Dr. Pete prescription. 
Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't really have any, like, studies that are painting that are, like, recent. Uh, oh, well, okay, yeah. I mean, um, as far as, like, stuff that you... I mean, you're I taking have a shot at painting, and then you're like, oh, I, I stink at this. I should... I should oh, better. okay. I have tons of that. Okay, so great. So much. Uh, no throw some in chat. It, throw some like... in the text chat, right. and then I'll pull them there onto my screen so we can look at them together. Oh, right, and I'm going to me... share screen on here as well. Give me just a second. Let me find the worst stuff that no one's seen because I was, like, too embarrassed to post it. <laughs> uh, it. I mean, I can pull out some embarrassing stuff if it makes you feel better. <laughs> I'd actually be I'd, I'd be interested to see that, actually. All right. Well, I'm going to try to make this study a fast one today, and then we can spend a little time working on comparing notes. Okay. Cool. Uh, all right. Let me just dig through my incredibly poorly organized folder. Uh, man, I actually did, um, like, a uh, one of my D&D &D characters was, like, a Theros character, and, like, I never got it done because it fell apart during the painting phase. Um, so I'll, like, throw that in there. I was actually looking at a bunch of your concept art when I, like, painted it. Oh, God, why are my folders so poorly organized? All right. While you're working on that, I'm going to get started on this study and block it in a little bit. Ready. And then, I mean, I'm tempted to just want to tell you, like, hey, well, why don't you just do the same thing I'm doing? Spend an hour or two, do a photo study. Just use it as an excuse to, like, experiment with painting techniques and just get comfortable with, like... Because when you have a cheat sheet, it, I feel like it's a lot easier. Um... You mean, by cheat sheet, you mean like reference? Yeah, like a reference. I mean, because it's like, you know, when you're working on your own character design or whatever, it's really easy to just feel like super lost. Yeah. And like, I was feeling a little lost yesterday about halfway through my study. But it, the, you know, there's like a, a threshold as to how bad it can get because you're like, you know, protected by the fact that, you know, you could, you're always doing this sort of imitation of the, of like, you know, whatever the photo is. So can't be that bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't find painting, like I can paint when I'm like looking at something, but I'm kind of brute forcing it. I'm just like, okay, this is this value. Like this shadow shape is like this shape. Let me just like copy. Sure. Um, but then when I, like, actually have to, like, use the things in principle, everything goes to hell. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you got to do uh, you got to do both. Yeah. Oh, man. The thumbnail for this was so rad. All right. Let me save these as, like, JPEGs. Uh. Theros guy concept thumbnail. And Theros guy catastrophic failure. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the name of the file? Uh, I'm just naming the JPEGs. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, Gotta name those JPEGs. Can't have unnamed JPEGs. All right. Tell me, uh, what did the JPEG do to you? <laughs> Show us on the doll where the JPEG touched you. Well, that's a thumbnail sketch that I was really happy with. And then, like, this is the point where I gave up. <laughs> that's really low res. Um, oh, is it super low? Yeah. Res? So okay. Wait. So this is the, this is, so this is where you're usually dumping out. Let me let me see. Oh wait. Okay. You got way further. Oh yeah, yeah. I drew it tiny. I like I drew this thumbnail back when I had that like hundred dollar like tiny computer. So like. Whenever I'm like 
not zoomed in really far. I had to like paint like really low res. Hmm. Um, so that's why this is probably why this is low res. Everything I was doing was low res. This is like a thumbnail too sure. that I just like kept painting. Okay. So um, you are saying that you're you're struggling with the painting part of the painting. Yeah, I liked the thumbnail, and then I was like, okay, I have this like rad concept time to like finish it or whatever and it went mm -hmm. completely to hell i think i made a lot of drawing mistakes in the face like i lost what was good about the face and um the values um, are just, let's like, focus on one problem at a time though okay painting there's not a lot of painting happening in this painting <laughs> it's like <laughs> you're doing um you're kind of doing cell shading right where it's like there's like a lit I mean, on the metal is a few more different values, but like on the cloth, there's like the lit part and then the unlit part. And then they've got kind of a raggedy edge to it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, let's just let's yeah, zoom in yeah. super, super close so we can look at this more specifically. So you've got like this color. Whoop. Uh, so you got like this color here and then you've got like a shadow color and you're just kind of filling in areas where it's either like a shadow color or not. And then you've got like a couple areas that are like going a little bit darker. Um, when I think about painting, the, the way I think about it is as such. It's like, um, you know, you've got your lit areas and your shadowed areas, right? But like, we all we all we all know all about that. So like with yeah. painting it's like it's about transitions. Like uh, on a sphere you get these like really soft transitions. And so it's not about like a lit color and a shadowed color cuz like there are lighting conditions where you're going to have like all, it's going to be all smooth all the way through. And so you're going to have like dozens or hundreds of, of little sub values inside a lit area. And the whole thing is that it's like slowly transitioning from like the top of that highlight down into the shadow. Right? Yeah. Um, which is like, you know, one of the most basic things that people get when they like are learning painting is they're like, oh, you gotta make things look smooth. And so like a lot of times what you get is people will reach for the smooth brush and they'll try to do like these really smooth transitions. But you've been looking at my art and you can see, well, it's not, a, it's not a, like a smooth gradient. There's not a soft brush being used. So obviously there's something that's a little chunkier that's creating that chunkiness. And the chunkiness is an asset. It's like part of the look that we want. Right? Yeah. Um, so where do we get the, the chunkiness is in part just due to like the brush that I'm using. But like what I'm attempting to accomplish with the brush is sometimes I'm trying to make smoother areas and uh, if I really want to make it look super smooth, I'll go in and I'll make tons and tons and tons of shading. And I'll smooth down all these little stair steps that, uh, that arise from the process. And sometimes I'm like leaving these little stair steps in. But, um, you know, like on an orb, things are pretty simple. But when you start shading like cloth and like uh, anatomy, like you end up with these very, very different, um, you end up with like a mixture of edges. And so you like, um, you'll sometimes be, you'll kind of be stretching and squashing edges. So like sometimes you'll wanna make like a really, really hard transition. And then that needs to like kind of open up into a softer one. Right? Yeah. Um, so I was saying painting is all about transitions. Like 
the if you're doing something cell shaded there there's like you just you just have kind of like one kind of edge and that's just like a hard edge you have your lit area and then your shattered area but like when you once you start rendering um, you end up having to be able to make all different kinds of edges some and like they need to kind of transition one into the other smoothly so you'll end up with um, edge like you'll end up with transitions that go over an incredibly long period of time so you'll have these really really long transitions that will sometimes go like the length of a whole canvas sometimes you'll end up with like these super tight transitions that turn on a single pixel and then sometimes you'll end up with these edges that are like kind of like in between and so a transition can you know go over the length of you know uh, a short span a little tiny span or like a medium span or a long span and uh, it can you know wave back and forth it can but it's just like the, the trick is that you are looking for what all of these um, what are the transitions that are happening and how long are they and like what direction are they flowing in and the whole process of rendering is like you know making those choices like identifying where you want to make you know transitions whether they need to, to get tighter or more extreme or softer and longer and um, you can you know add divots and dents you can make it look like something is being hit with more or less light um, like the reasons why we are making these transitions have to do with like understanding light and materials and form and all that kind of stuff but at a certain point, like the painting is really just about like trying to the process of painting is about picking like how short or long these little transitions are going to be in order to um, affect the way that something looks like in terms of its the surface detail or the material or like the lighting conditions. But I'm not seeing you like get to the point where you're sort of deciding those things because you're not really building a lot of, you know, uh, careful transitions in here. Like you're getting a little bit inside like the metal where you've got these stair steps. Though it looks like you, part of the reason you're struggling here is just due to like the brush that you're using is like got these really stiff edges to it. Uh, yeah. Um, if you try the thing, the trick that I use where I turn the flow down on the brush, uh, it's totally doable in Krita. You can, um, without having to use a soft edge brush, be able to start to like smooth out some of these transitions. And uh, depending on how like uh, careful you are about like making them smoother, you get either like a, a softer or a chunkier look. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm starting to wonder if maybe this piece isn't a good example because I just gave up so early. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Um, I have. So Would I'm curious what happens when you try to do something with a photo because then you're not stylizing it. You know, you're not choosing to like make something that's more um, cell shaded or like try to do some exotic material. You know, you are trying to replicate the various different like patterns of like value and all the transitions between those values and the colors and all that kind of stuff yeah i um i think i actually like i have to go digging for them but i do have some like painting studies i did where i spent a decent amount of time on them um and they're like they're they're all right um it's just though like you know like, i don't have problems when i'm doing a study or whatever it's just a matter of like Oh, okay, there's like this shape of this value here, like copy that, and then like there's this shadow shape, and it seems to be roughly this value, so make that, sh you know? Sure. Like, um, uh, I do struggle more when I do like photos, though, um, just because I don't know, I'm not used to <laughs> like realistic like value structures and things like that. Uh, um, yeah, but I mean, it's like I think that knowing all that stuff and having it like 
uh, established is going to make a big difference for like how well you're able to um, control that on your own personal pieces. I think that like I'm curious what happens if you try to do an hour long photo study along with me today and then we okay. take a look at it together at the end of the time period when we're both finished. All right. Um, all right. I'll give that a shot, I guess. Uh. But um, yeah, I mean, for my money, like the thing, the, the thing that makes it really easy is just like setting it up so that you have like the reference that is at the same size so that you don't have to try to like um, turn it to make it too hard on yourself um, in terms of like figuring out whether or not you're following the reference correctly. And then, um, you know, not get too picky about making it like a perfect replication of the photo, but like instead putting your own stylistic spin on it a little bit, not necessarily in the drawing, but like just allowing yourself to be a little bit more um, imprecise about how you're doing things like color Alrighty. So that you're not uh, stuck, like, worrying about getting the exact right shade of blue or whatever, you know? Yeah. All right. Um, I guess I'll start right now. I'll stop it. Give it a shot, and then um, it's going to be painful. <laughs> I guarantee it. I could, that's, like, the one promise I can make is that it's going to be an uncomfortable experience. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to, like, having to draw a realistic head kind of been a while but uh, like might. you need to know all those things for you know you drawing stylized figures too right uh yeah it kind of depends a little so like one of the one of the struggles i've been having ever since i like transitioned to anime right is there's no objectively like correct way to render an anime drawing like everybody right. does it a bit differently um so like when you're doing studies of like anime art and trying to like reverse engineer people's secrets or whatever what keeps happening to me is um when i go into my own uh painting or whatever um oh man it's weirdly easy to talk and like do this study at the same time weird yeah it just um, doesn't use that part of the brain because you don't actually you don't have to make creative decisions so you're just like moving your hand around yeah um yeah so like uh what keeps happening to me is um i'll make like a reference board or whatever i'll start like a personal project of some kind and um i kind of know what i'm doing when it comes to like drawing because i just have a formula that i stick to and if i stick to it it tends to produce a good drawing um and uh i can also like experiment with it a little bit right i can like change up my formula by like 10 percent, and like still the results are like pretty predictable and i feel very confident about like getting up to the drawing phase, mm -hmm. getting a good looking piece of line art. Um, but then when I get to the painting phase, right, I start thinking like, oh God, like what kind of like values do I want to use for the skin? Well, why don't I look at my favorite artists? And it's like, well, fuck, they all use like different value structures because they're like stylizing it in different ways. Yeah. Um, and I end up just like repainting things over and over again, second guessing um like my creative decisions um trying to combine other people's sort of like sensibilities in like weird ways and then like not being able to figure out how to do it um yeah uh and i don't know like i i, I get the feeling this is actually a problem with like more uh realistic or semi-realistic stuff as well um just because like I mean, stylization is a thing in like pretty much every genre of art to some degree, right? Like you're not drawing photorealistic, right? Weird floating angel man, but right? but he, let me but, but let me make an observation that like, um, not to keep coming back to this well over and over again, but AI is able to do a really good version of anime because anime, anime is formulaic, uh -huh. and like the reason why it can do like they can make an uh that you see lots and lots of AI anime out there is because like there's a lot of like um, there's a clear understanding about like certain conventions on things like how do you render skin tone and like what are faces shaped like and that when you reduce down a lot of that ambiguity it becomes a lot easier to like just sort of turn it into a formula and so if you're like looking 
deep if you're looking deeply at a lot of like anime style reference you know you may end up with the perception that there is like a series of correct choices to be made here and then now you're running you, when you go and uh try to um emulate like something that is less formulaic like painting style you know it makes sense that your reaction would be like yo what the hell like there's no correct answers anymore i'm in this world of uncertainty like all of a sudden what happened you know so i'm wondering if that i wonder if that is what you're experiencing but like um, that's kind of why i like painting <laughs> 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 like the it, it leave it's it's so open ended as to actually leave you room to be able to like leave a bit of your own mark on it you know even though there's so many painters in the world and it's been going on for so long that like there's enough latitude in in like it as a you know painting styles to be able to like have um have you know genuine inventiveness that's yours Um. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of there's actually quite a bit of variation in the way people draw anime as well. I know um, there's there's there is a lot, and there's some artists who stand out that you can just spot their style instantly from across the room. Yeah. Um. But there is like a bit of a there's some stock conventions that cross between a lot of artists. Yeah. And like. I mean, I just feel like over the course of the last year or so, we're starting to see that kind of come to roost in a sort of weird sideways way. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think that like, it's probably really healthy to spend some time working in spaces where there's fewer conventions in addition to what you're doing, because it, it'll leave you in a mindset where you're gonna be more inventive within the conventions of anime? Um, yeah. I don't I'm I don't want to sound like I'm advocating that you should switch styles or whatever. Like I I think your style's awesome. I love the work that you're making. And I'm I think that like having this skill set on top of it could really expand what you're able to do. Yeah, I think so too. Do you know um do you know the artist uh Ao Aoyin Hatsu? No. Um He's like, um, I kind of, I kind of don't want to like pull him up right now because I'm doing the study and I only have an hour. Um, I want to do as best I can, but like, uh, after I finish the study, I'll like pull him up and like show you okay. what I'm talking about. But he's, um, he's got like a super, um, like standout rendering style for his mm -hmm. like anime art. Um, and there's aspects of it that I love. Um, and I keep trying to like emulate it, but like it's really hard because his drawing style is very different from mine, and like mashing the two things together is very difficult. And he's also like the guy's a, like clearly a master painter, like in addition to being like a very good anime artist. Mm -hmm. uh, so like you know, there's some like foundation that he has that's allowing him to like do the things he's doing that I don't quite have. But having a foundation like that would be cool. Um, there's, um, there's a piece of art that's been very influential on me, um, for, like, the better part of a decade. A single piece? I don't... Yeah, um, and it's funny, too, because I don't have it. I saw it in a 4chan thread. <laughs> I have no idea who painted it. I just have a hazy memory of what it looks like. Oh, man. Uh, in my mind. Um, but yeah, it was this, like, anime Valkyrie that had awesome like rainbow colored like realistic reflections on her armor um and i was like shit i want to do that that's so fucking dope um and uh i don't think it was oyin uh hatsu who painted it but like his stuff has a similar sort of thing there's like crazy like realistic reflections on like the armor of like all his characters he does like anime fantasy stuff right so there's uh -huh. a lot of a lot of characters wearing armor and it's just it's so dope i really love colorful reflections um, I feel like I'm a bit ahead um, on, like, painting, um, like, armor, um, like, metal textures and stuff, too, relative to, like, other stuff, weirdly, because I, like, care about it, and I've just spent so much time trying to, like, figure out... Any Anything you care about, you're just going to be better at than average. Yeah. Um, 
but it's like it's inconsistent still like i've done a couple pieces where i'm like pretty happy with how the like metal turned out um and then i have other ones where it's like oh god how did i do it again and i just like struggle like crazy um yeah metal's hard Metal is really hard. I mean, you're like, oh, I'm good at metal. I'm like, well, that makes m one of us. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, most people struggle with it because it, like, just doesn't behave. Like, there's a sort of formula, like a set of laws that, like, um, matte materials, like, obey by. And, like, that will get cover, like, a lot of stuff in the world. And then metal just like throws all those rules out the window and you go, okay, well, I guess <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to learn how to paint again for this one material in specific. And like, I mean, not yeah. by painting, but like I, you, you sort of have to learn like how like light and like how to map it in your head. And it's, it's just fundamentally different on uh, reflective surfaces that it is like on like matte surfaces. And, learning where the two overlap it can be really instructive but like it is it's just a chore and everybody who does it is like has to go through a certain amount of like frustration to develop a develop it is almost like a second language yeah yeah i think i sort of have the opposite thing going on where like i'm getting okay at rendering metal because i've just like practice it a whole bunch mm -hmm. but like i haven't practiced like rendering like cloth folds and stuff like that as much and like skin um so like i don't know there's like one or two materials that i'm okay at rendering i'm okay at doing hair uh, i'm okay at doing metal and like they reinforce each other a bit too because like when you're drawing anime hair it's like shiny right so like you can right. kind of use the same principles you use to render metal, uh, like, no <laughs> i think shiny things are different than reflective things like they they uh, share a couple of properties, but I think that learning them to paint them out of your head realistically is actually two different skills. They're like cousin languages, but they're they are I think they're different. Sort of like shiny things. They're like they have reflections in them. Effectively, they're just like blurrier. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like you can't make out details and stuff. Right. So it's like the same sort of. It's a mix. It's a mix between like matte materials and and reflective yeah. ones. But yeah, shiny stuff. You know, you still have, when you're thinking about where core highlights are, like uh, specular highlights, they, it's the same process as figuring out how some reflective materials look. But, um, yeah, it's like a weird mix. It's like, and with shiny stuff, it almost feels like it's easier to BS your way through it than with um, some other things. Just because it, like, it doesn't fully obey the rules of... Uh, of like matte materials, but it does like, so it, it allows you to kind of like, you know, BS your way through it a little bit. Cause it's like, you know, it doesn't need to perfectly match where a light source is in order to look generally right. Like it's just, it's confusing to our brains to figure out exactly where a highlight's supposed to be coming from. Yeah. Yeah, I'm blazing through this compared to the one I was doing yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a, way, a part. Part of it is that it's this is a way way easier photo to study. Are you what are you what are you doing? Are you, um, um, I can dream it, I guess. Uh, so far, there's not a whole lot of painting. I'm just like drawing some of the like structure. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I just like I have some photo reference of like medieval clothes. Um, oh, okay. So. Um Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be busting into Yeah, I'm going to be busting through this like mega speed compared to yesterday. Yesterday was painful, so slow. I was like challenging myself to try to think about the way I was making it differently and do a different um uh what do you call it? Different process for like putting the image together. And I ended up feeling so fucking lost, and so dumb. <laughs> and so, like, I was like, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to be coming at this again hard, and I will be learning. And it was an educational day. You know, the discomfort was like a sign that, like, I was learning shit. And then today yeah. I'm just like, I'm picking an easy one. I'm doing a shorter stream. 
because I, I took I spent over three hours on it yesterday. I was feeling just totally wiped by the end of it. Um. Damn. Three hour photo study while talking. I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be exhausting. Um. I remember the days of working on non-monitor tablet. <laughs> uh, used to do it for a living. I still don't know how you're doing it. LOL. I prefer it. Um, it's. I find it way easier. I don't want to have to like keep my shoulder lifted up the entire time while I'm working. Okay. I feel like. Um drawing tablets kind of promote decent posture and stuff like well i don't know about that i mean i'm pretty hunched over i'm i'm pretty shrimp like most days so okay i don't know my just my neck always hurts after a while when i'm like drawing in my sketchbook but i can mm. just like sit at my computer and draw all day with like no discomfort well, someday I hope you'll have a nice drawing table that allows you to comfortably work in graphite without having that. Um, yeah, I think I actually do have a drawing table that, like, my dad got, like, my sister and I when we were, like, kids. It's just, like, it's around here. So I'd have to, like, dig it up. Mm. Oh, no. oh, man, you should get an easel. Oh, wait, you got, you're sharing your screen? I'm going to pull that up. Oh, okay. You, you're great. like going, yeah, you're going for a tough one. This has got a lot of shit in it. <laughs> uh, that does. Uh, kind of like I just, I need like a, now that I'm streaming, I need like a third monitor. I don't know how far along this is gonna get. <laughs> it has a lot of stuff. I didn't have very many options though. I don't have that many like. Do you want me to thing. send you one of mine? And do you um, want to try the same one as me? I can send you. The, I even post the JPEG here. Uh, I feel like I'm committed to this one. And, really? Um, You've been working on it for like I five like minutes. This. You're like. <laughs> uh, I've been working on it for 25 minutes. 25 minutes? No way. Uh yeah. I did a lot of drawing. Uh, okay. I know, you had a lot of drawing done. I was like, damn, that was fast. Wait, um... Yeah, uh, wait, I've been live for 40 minutes? Damn, yeah. it feels like it's been 10 minutes. What the fuck? I'm wise when you're giving me free painting advice. Yeah, I guess. Um, okay. Let's see. What are we gonna do here? I mean, I'm running out of time, so I'm not way ahead on time. I'm totally normal on time. Illusion shattered. I spent a certain amount of, uh, of it fumbling around on Twitter trying to promote the stream. All right, okay. let's see. Corrections. Hmm. It's... Let's see. I'm going to try to make some corrections, get the structure a little closer before I move on to any details. Because I don't want compounding errors to start to get in my way. Realistic skin tones are gonna wreck me. <laughs> Why? What's uh, what are you scared about when it comes to realistic skin tones? Uh, there's just a lot of like little subtle cue variations, and I kind of don't have like I just haven't done them enough that mm. I have like go-to colors to pick and that kind of thing. Uh, it's not about go-to colors. Like 
that's I think one of that's one of the things that I think might be tripping you up is that like painting it on drawing you know there's like a it feels like there's more like right and wrong I guess it's not that's not entirely true like um a lot of uh, everything about color is relative it's like the level of relativity in color is kind of beyond what our intuition allows us to think about it like your your default intuition about um, the way color works and the way color is perceived is like it, ev for everyone is like wrong out of the box. The colors just kind of like need to be right in relation to one another. Uh, yeah, color is color, and in some cases even value is very very relative like there's a lot of optical illusion and you know, let me pull up a, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on this but let me pull up a quick optical illusion um here we go here's a classic believe it or not is the name of the web page okay Like, here's an example. Like, the A and B squares are the same value in this image. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen this, yeah. You know, and it's just like we absolutely don't perceive them to be the same color. Yeah. Um, the same is true of, like, skin tones. Like, it's, it's about the transition. It's about, like, our expectation. So, um... When it comes to getting something to feel like it's the right color, it has to do with like how much does it shift from the things that are nearby. Like we were talking yesterday, um, Jay and I were talking a little bit yesterday about uh, our love of the color gray because gray can technically appear to be any color. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this is something that like academically, I'm sure you've heard all this shit before. Yeah. But... Um, Developing an intuition for it, realizing that, like, you don't need to ac actually... Because, you know, I don't actually go into the color picker that often. Like, all the stuff that I do with color it has to do with me altering color in ways where it's relative. Like, uh, the gradient maps are sort of pushing things warmer, cooler, redder, bluer, you know, whatever. And then um, the blending modes are doing the same sort of thing. They're not actually, I'm not searching for a particular color. I'm searching for a, um, like a interaction between colors. Uh -huh. That's sort of the secret of the thing is that I never actually know what the real colors are supposed, specific like swatch colors are supposed to be. Like graphic designers need to worry a lot about Pantone colors because you know you're picking out a particular hue for some piece of text or something. There is like an absolute correct color in some cases, but for painting, it's like it's about it. It is entirely about the relativity between them. Okay. Um, yeah, I've started to pick up a little bit some of the stuff you're talking about just in my own little experiments um the thing about gray um yeah color color relativity like if you um uh like you can kind of shift like the whole value structure of an image down like a couple values or whatever and it'll like still read kind of the same like you won't yeah. really detect that it's like that much darker yeah um yeah and there's stuff too like um I have this bad habit where, like, I put too much white in everything. Um, I was thinking of showing you before. Like, I wasn't sure what bad painting to, like, show you earlier. Um, but there's one I did where, like, I thought it was a good painting until the end where I had to paint, like, glowing red fire. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, like, oh, the values in the ent literally the entire thing are too light. I cannot paint red fire. Oh, yeah, one of the tricks, one of the tricks I think about all the time it, when I'm painting, uh, especially <clears throat> painting out of my head, is um, I think about transitions over like a long, like there's these little tiny transitions where you're like, oh, I need to make this, 
cheekbone, you know, transition into the jowl in a certain way. There's like a, you know, figure out how long of a transition it's going to be. But then there's these longer transitions. Like if, like if you look over like on the figure that I'm doing, it gets the light is like all hitting on top of the forehead and then it's like slowly getting darker as we go further down the face. And so like once we get down to the neck, like none of the highlights on the neck are anywhere near as bright as the highlights on the forehead. But like okay. you have this like long transition over the length of the head. And like yeah. building those in always adds interest. And so like I'm always plotting ways of trying to figure out how to not only get all these little transitions to, to be like like rendered correctly, but like how do I build in like larger transitions over like a longer length inside the image? And so one of the things you can do is early on in a painting, like you're like, oh, okay, well, everything kind of looks too bright. Um, you just take a darker, you, when you're like at an earlier stage in the painting when things are still loose and you're still in like black and white or whatever, you just like go ahead and just add like a whole ton of dark like on the on like the bottom part of a piece. Like you can just go like, okay, well I want to transition the light from like the top of the suit to the bottom of the suit from like lighter to darker. And you can just go in with like a big loose brush stroke, whether it's with a soft brush or just, you know, whatever. And you can start to build in those larger turns of form. And you can lay them in really, really loose. And then when you go in later to go render everything, you end up with like those smaller like uh, bits. And like that ends up making a huge, huge difference. Like in the example you showed me, everything was rendered as though it was being hit by the same amount of light. But like yeah, yeah. One yeah, of the, some problem, of the classic yeah, tricks sure. I'll do is like, I'll just put like a um, cast shadow over like right where the viewer is naturally going to look. And like, and then you have like this like interest of like, hey, some parts of it are lit and some parts of it aren't. And it's, it's like free and easy drama. You know, it's just like, I'm just gonna like take a sliver of light instead of like the whole light. And you can take, even with like a photo reference piece, it doesn't look that unnatural, even when I just do like a couple of brush strokes, just like blotting out some of the lights and like leaving uh, some areas in shadow can add a tremendous amount of drama for basically for free. If you start blocking it in early, then, you know, all of the work that you do to refine things later on is just going to play into that. I kind of yeah. wish that my piece was doing something like that. You know, it's like, make this portrait a little bit more dramatic, but I'm just gonna stick closer to the reference, I think. Um, actually, I think one of the problems I'm having um, is um, I take this really structured approach whenever I'm like trying to render one of my drawings, um, where I like block out a bunch of flat colors and I want to have like a step-by-step -step process that I do to like paint something, where it's just like, first you add the like, um, the sort of like, main sort of like form shadows or whatever uh and then you paint like a gradient on top of like the overall thing on a multiply layer and then you add some highlights and then you add some bounce light on like another layer and that kind of thing but what it tends to result in is an image where like everything is getting the same amount of light and there's no like fall off uh -huh. from, like the light source or whatever and it looks kind of lame I've seen people break it up in interesting ways where they do like their AO and on a separate um, layer and then they add in their normal, like their and their local colors on a separate layer and then they add their cast shadows on a separate layer. And like, I've, I've seen people really break it down super procedurally like that and still get like a really nice painterly or realistic results at the end. Yeah. It's, it's possible to do that, but I mean, I think what with like people who are painting in an anime style, I, what I'd see more often is it's like you set up a, a clipping mask um, for flats and then yep. you just go to town inside the flats. Yeah, I need to, I need to do that more because whenever I'm doing studies, like they turn out better and it's just because I'm like freestyling it, you know, right. like 
just like, oh, I need a bit more darkness there. So just like pick a random darker color and like just pick at things until it looks right. Yeah. Instead of like trying to have some sort of. Trying to overly systematize stuff will stiffen it up. I like, I mean, that was where I was yesterday. I was really hurting. I was like trying to come up with like a new system of working and that meant I was trying to create a lot of rules for everything. And then uh, things started to move really fast as soon as I was like, ah, I'm out of time and I hate where this is. I'm just going to like start working as fast as possible to get this as like, you know, start working as intuitively and quickly as possible. And then everything started to come together in a fun way. Interesting things started to happen. Like um, some of it, I think, is like there's portions of your brain that are nonverbal that yeah. uh, have something to contribute to the creative process. So as long as you are trying to follow verbal directions or provide verbal directions to yourself, you are permanently suppressing that um, part of your brain. And that yeah. like you can trick yourself into getting out of your own way and like uh, letting that portion of your brain run a little looser and like have more input. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that could be. You hear about it all the time, like the fine arts, where like there'll be, <laughs> the you'll hear about artistic processes that are basically sound like some, some form of self-hypnotism. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, once I'm done with this study, um, if you don't mind, I'd kind of like to show you some of my stuff that's like a bit more recent that I kind of like sure. painted. Because I, I think I actually, let, that um that like Theros guy was from a while ago and I gave up really early into it. Um, you might be able to give me like a bit more interesting feedback with something that I both tried harder on and that I've like learned a bit more um, about painting. Sure. I did because I like I did a bunch of val like I kind of realized like man I have been like not improving at painting for like a year. I got to do something about this. So I did some value studies and immediately realized like, oh my values are fucked. <laughs> That's <why> everything's <laughs> turning out bad. Um yeah. So you, uh, do you think it like you're? Because like I mean if you're talking about color in a way where it sounds like you haven't you haven't learned a lot of the interesting lessons about color yet or you haven't internalized them yet but like i feel like you kind of need to know values first to get a lot out of color yeah like i i work in them separately in part because i feel like the color the values end up informing the color like they end up like cooperating to a degree because like if I try to add color to a piece that isn't ready for it, it gets really bad. Okay. Um, yeah. But like I need to have a certain amount of um, values already established for the colors to feel like they can stick to them. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of the uh, like I think I kind of realized recently that like one of the problems I've been having is like I'm focused too much on color and like not enough on value um, and anime has like broken my brain a little bit about values because um, uh, value is one of those things that like anime illustrators just cannot agree on like people stylize the value structure of their like pieces um, in yeah. like very very different ways um, and it's sort of led to me like trying to copy it without sort of like understanding what they're doing. Um, and it's led to me kind of being like, uh, I don't know, like good at like, you know, um, like arranging sort of like shapes of color so that my painting has like kind of a neat like graphical read or whatever. But then when it's time to like actually make it look like there's form, like I just have no idea what I'm doing. Um, yeah um i actually do kind of get what you were saying about um uh like color relativity that is actually kind of how i think whenever i'm like picking colors um like i've noticed that like it looks pretty cool whenever you um are painting and like you have your light area and your shadow area and then you saturate the transition 
a yeah. lot. So like instead of thinking about what the objectively correct color is, I just think, okay, pick a color for the light. Okay, now pick a color that's just like darker for like the shadow. Okay, now pick a color that's just like a bit lighter, but not as light as the light and also more saturated. And it'll look good as long as the relationships are correct. What I found is like, I typically don't go to the color picker ever for those moments. I'm always like trying to find them. Like I try to set up an environment where I'm going to be able to pull them like from the background instead. Oh, uh, okay. So like okay. pull them, find find a saturated note somewhere else in the composition and then just color sample those like um, saturated terminals into it. Or I'll that's one of the things I'm trying to accomplish with like the gradient mode step, uh, gradient map step is that I'm often looking to try to get the gradient map to give me saturated terminals that I can um, that I can like pull from and spread around. Okay. I don't know. I'm. I, I don't know why I've got like the. I feel like the more I talk about it, the more I'm realizing I have this like aversion to trying to go into the color picker. Like the fewer times I can do it, the more comfortable I feel. Uh, there might be some wisdom to that. Um, I, uh, I, I've heard you talk about this before and I've like experimented a little bit with implementing some of your advice, like, um, uh, some of your YouTube videos are what convinced me to start using like blending modes more. Um, I developed a process that kind of like leveled me up a little bit where instead of picking colors, what I was doing was just putting in some local color and then just using like color dodge or soft light layers to like illuminate things and then multiply layers to like shade things and i would just like go back and forth like do an illumination layer do a darkening layer do an illumination layer do a darkening layer and it's actually like a very fast method of like building up values and you get accidental like hue shifts and there's a bit more like harmony yeah all the colors because they all have each other in them a little bit by the time you're done Um, one of the things I kind of realized when I was doing value studies is that um, I don't do dark enough like occlusion shadows like I bet you if I um, like just went back through some of my old like bad paintings and literally did nothing else except like paint in some really dark areas in the shadows they'd improve like I don't know 30% uh, I don't know. I really need to just like stick with it. Just like, because I keep being like, I need to get better at painting. And then I make a plan for like how to get better at painting and implement it for three days and then get distracted by something else. I think it might just be a matter of like you need to like, because like I learned painting by like wanting to make a certain type of piece that involved like a lot of rendering. And it, I wasn't breaking things down into like separate layers for like shadows and highlights and stuff. I was just like using the brush tool to push shit around a lot. And then yeah. over the course of like some number of paintings, like that became just like a really fast and intuitive process that I could lean on for all other kinds of like larger work processes. Being able to just like grab the paintbrush tool and just use it to push shit around is really, really handy, regardless of like what you're doing. Yeah, I actually, um, one of my better paintings, I kind of did that a bit and it like paid off. Um, I don't know. I keep doing this thing, though, where I'll, like, experiment with something. It kind of works. And I'm like, okay, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> For, like, no good reason. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, it's just because I'm indecisive. I don't know what I want my, like, rendering style to be. Um, well... It's not a matter of, like, I think picking your rendering style. I think, it, it, like, you need to be able to fucking render. Like, I mean, every if anybody <laughs> wants to paint, they need to, like, be able to, like, intuitively use a brush to create a series of, like, small and large transitions over the course of the canvas, right? That's, that's like, <laughs> that's, like, what rendering is. Um, and so, like, if you can just do that and just do it the manual way then like it doesn't matter whether or not you're doing it on like one like 
whether you're like breaking the highlights and shadows down into separate layers or doing it all in one big thing or like keeping everything organized and broken apart or like what I'm doing where I'm just always working on the top layer. Like you need to be able to, if you want to paint, you got to be able to render. And, um, and like, that's, I think just the end of it. Like there's certain types of like abstract painting and modern painting that like modern art that like doesn't require that. But if you're doing representational work, like it, it really is like, a super important skill to have. Um, and um, until you got that, you kind of don't have like a, a lot to lean on. Everything is going to feel uncomfortable and weird if so long as you like don't have like a really firm grip on just being able to push things around. Yeah, um, it's actually like impeding like you. Um you uh you laughed at me for saying for like listening to something you were saying and then my takeaway being like man i need to get better at painting yeah. but um <laughs> uh, i mean it's I like that's my... I, I laugh at it because like that's my takeaway in my head literally every time i see anyone do anything with art i just go damn i should get better at painting someday <laughs> <laughs> and like i i think it's funny because it's like that is the thought that goes to my head non-stop but i also know that like people look to me as a reference for painting so I, I just feel like it's funny that it's just like this never ending like chorus of everyone's subconscious all at the same time going like, damn, I should learn how to do that someday. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, um, what, what I meant when I said that is um, there's a style of drawing I'd really like to pursue that I think my lack of painting ability is hindering me in pursuing. Um, I would really like to be able to better represent um, sort of like the shadows in a drawing. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, the only thing I think about when I'm drawing is occlusion shadows. And nothing, and sometimes reflections. Um, and like nothing else. <laughs> and like just having, being more comfortable with painting would probably help me with that. Um, oh, also there's this thing I keep doing where like I set horrible traps for myself inadvertently um, by like, drawing without taking into consideration considering like what the painting is going to be like and then jumping into painting and then being like wait this drawing doesn't work as a painting god damn it not again you can make any drawing into a painting i think the the times where i've struggled the most is where i was like trying to do someone's like comic book page or whatever uh, sometimes it just feels like there's no lighting. Like the lighting scheme that's being laid out in a drawing is not like going to work uh, when you try to like render it and make a series of like softer transitions and stuff. It just like alters the nature of the work so much that you just don't have the drawing ends up working against you instead of for you. Um, I'll but, be. Uh... I'm just going to get up and get a drink. All this talking has made my throat super parched. And now the inside of my ear feels weird, and it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I'll see you back here. <laughs> hey, Adam, what's going on, man? Pete, what up? How much? I'm uh, I'm taking the dive. I'm doing this with you today. Hell yeah. Can you um, uh, can you share in the chat? Like, what are you, what are you working on? Uh, yeah, let me see. I mean, I, I'm I'm cheating. I'm uh, I, I just did the uh, I traced the line out. And I'm just focusing on uh, banning the values. And the oh, colors. you see, like one of my big goals was to um, get better at spotting, like, where things were off. And so, like, trying to plot out the structure has been like a daily challenge for me that I feel like I can't skip. Yeah, I I want to get there, but I know I'm like. I, I'm so unfamiliar with what I'm doing here that it, it feels like I'm stacking too many blocks. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, wh what I do is I is I flip back and forth between the two so that I have like um, I can see the differences of like the more like I can see the thing kind of morph. Um, right. And like I can spot like. Oh, this jawline is like off by a decent amount. I should really expand the width of the face. And yeah. like uh so I'll like cheat using that, but then it I still need to like spot it and make corrections. 
And I've found that that's like, that's really, really helped in terms of my ability to spot stuff after just like a month. Like yeah. I got, I got way better at it. I need, I need training wheels, man. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there quick. I, I just don't, I don't think that I'm only bringing it up because I don't think tracing uh, helps build that skill ever. No, that, I mean, that's not the skill that I'm, I'm worried about right now. Yeah. The skill is, I, I don't know how to build a painting like at all. <laughs> we were just talking about that. We are like, yeah, yeah. Um, I should learn how to paint someday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. I mean, anybody who anybody who's like an amateur seeing your work, if you they were to hear you say like, "Yeah, I don't know how to build a painting," be like, "What the fuck? What is this guy's problem? <laughs> why are you why are you being like this, Adam?" <laughs> I mean, I think like kind of like you said, there there's some you know subconscious intuition that is there somewhere, but it's like I, I feel just so unprepared. Uh, but it, I mean, this one's turning out okay. But I did I did trace the liner here. I'll post it in the uh, the, the the Discord chat. But yeah, no, it's uh, I'm gonna get there, man. Um, I mean, I don't know if there is a there there. You know, like what does there mean? The, I've been thinking the, about this a lot because uh, I've been seeing. I like saw a a, a a social media post from an artist, and I was like. God damn, it looks like they did that like live at like a bar on an iPad or something. And I'm just like, it's so efficient. Like, holy shit. Like, I'm just seeing like, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting kind of good at this. And then I'm realizing like what set of skills is available to somebody who really spends like many, many years trying to like focus on these skills, like how far it can go. And I'm just like, whoa. This yeah. could be a long trip. <laughs> yeah, not I'm, by there. I mean, literally, just I'm gonna I'm gonna start with line art at some point, and then actually do it properly to study. But uh, yeah, but no, I, I do. It, it is funny hearing you talk about like how like you, and I think this is the same with any artist that's pursuing mastery. It doesn't matter how good you are. You kind of like get sort of habituated to your own level, and all you can see is what people are doing that you can't. And it's this kind of, uh, and I think that's what makes it, it's, it's fun to have always a thing to look uh, up to, I guess, or look, yeah. look forward to. Which, which I think is why, I, I remember when I when I first um, started doing art. One of the things that attracted me about it was it felt like it was a bottomless pit, in a good way. Mm -hmm. in that it would like Part there was things I would do months. where it felt like if I invested a certain amount of time I'd get to the end and then I'd be kind of done oh you're doing the same you're doing the same image as me oh yeah yeah very you get you've got a very uh it's got a, a it's got some some um at a moral mood going on over here I stole your idea of, of laying the shadow on the forehead. I ripped that straight off of you as you're speaking. Uh, <laughs> just throw a little shadow on the on the face, and then all of a sudden you get like instant atmosphere. It's great. It's, it's brilliant. Cheat yeah. code. Yeah, I know. I know. Brom does that a lot with his. his I, I remember you uh, telling this to me. I stole it like from. Put... I stole it from Tyler Jacobson. Okay, cool. He was describing it, and I was I was like looking at a painting of his. He had this magic card of this like commander card that. It's like an orc with two heads. And I'm like, damn, like the lighting on this thing is crazy dramatic. And I'm like, wait a minute. There's just like this big diagonal shadow that's like cutting through the figure. Like, I'm like, that's cool. Like, you can just take the part that's supposed to be the, like the highlight and just throw a huge shadow on it. And it gets super moody instantly. That's such a good hack. And then I've just had felt like I've had to resist using it every single painting. Right. It's such it a so useful good, cheat code. Yeah. <laughs> Something about verbal descriptions of magic art cracks me up sometimes. You're like, yeah, it was just like an work with two heads. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. There's like, I've seen people, I, when I was a kid, I would try to do this thing where like, um, I'd have my brother like read out, like describe what was on the card and I would tell, say like what the name of the card was and what it did. Uh-huh. Because like, there was a point where I was like, every magic card I owned, I could like take a simple verbal description of it and like translate it into like uh, names and stats and stuff. Okay. But now I, I'm 
<laughs> there's so many magic cards. I don't know if like how possible that is for people to do. There's probably somebody out there. If people can learn how to paint, they can memorize every magic card. Well, I'm sure they can. Mem I'm I'm confident they could memorize every magic card, but uh, I like the distinguishing them verbally, I think would be a trick. Just because like you would have to develop a certain amount of understood language between you and the person describing it. Sorry, I interrupted with my dumb tangent. What were we talking yeah. about? I don't remember. Don't remember. Damn. Okay. How, how are you feeling uh, today, Pete, versus yesterday? Well, this I'm doing a way easier piece, and I'm just attacking it in the way that like I has worked for me in the past, and so I I just feel like I am, I feel like I've turned the difficulty level on the game down to like, like beginner mode, and I'm just one hitting, I'm just like one shotting all the enemies. I just feel like I'm I've like, I'm full on just going for personal satisfaction without any challenge whatsoever. And hey man, uh, it's, sometimes it's it feels refreshing. good just to get a win. It's, it feels good. It feels really good just to like have an easy win and be just like doing something that's like so easy. I mean, the like the lighting on this figure is like nice and full. So we've got like tons of little, like there's lots of the little like micro turns in the features like around the mouth and stuff are showing up in the values and so like i can recognize where those like like smaller features are and like um add them to the painting without having to like do any amount of interpretation it's like i already have a language for everything that's happening and as i'm putting it in like my prior experience is allowing me to kind of just like blaze through it it's very, very easy today. Okay. So my plan is to do like a super rendered face, uh, keep the hair a little chunkier, um, keep the jacket. A, I'm, I might stylize the jacket just because I, I don't really care about doing the color. I, I think I'm gonna do the thing where I have like the background color and the, um, and like, I have like a couple colored elements and then just keep the skin tone gray. So I don't think I'm going to colorize the face at all. But if I'm going to challenge myself with anything, I think I'm going to take another swing at like having a little bit of a blockier overall like look on the jacket. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to copy you. Right now my jacket's a smeared mess. Yeah, I've got these like smeary colors that are fine, but um, I wonder what it would take to get it to feel like bigger, flatter, more intentional brush strokes. Right. So I'm gonna keep the opacity up. I'm gonna try to keep it above 80% while I'm working on it. I can still like kind of shade at the edge of strokes just because of my brush dynamics. I'm gonna try to keep my fingers off the top row here. Man, this is surprisingly fun doing a photo study. It, I'm that's what I've been saying the whole time. It's like I was staying away from it because I thought it was gonna be like this awful chore, and it's just liberation of like not needing to like do anything creative and just focus on craft. Which is something I never gave myself permission to do. I was like, oh, the craft will come from the creative projects. Do you find that, I don't know if you've, you've played around with this at all, but like doing a, like a photo ref study before you do your mainline work to sort of get warmed up, or do you like doing it the other way around? Well, I've never done photo refs until I started doing them like, like two months ago. <laughs> yeah. So like, I haven't had the opportunity to even try that yet. Okay. <laughs> Like I've only finished like one painting since I started doing the photo refs. I started another oh. one. Okay. 
Oh, he's got a little bit of a reflection from his collar on the neck. It's interesting. And I'm gonna just I'm just gonna have this shirt be white. I'm gonna have the shirt be like a solid, mostly a solid color and just blow it out. Old choices. I mean, choices. They're not crazy. They're not like nuts choices. They're just like, these are, you know, there's some artists I know that their whole recognized style is that they will blow, they do like blown out flat areas inside every single painting. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, they've made the choice that that's how they're going to have people recognize their art. And, uh, you know, we've all, we're all making choices as to like, what is going to be our thing. I guess, I mean, I'm not sure if it's entirely a choice or just a matter of taste. Sometimes it feels like it's a bit of a choice. But um, making any choice and then committing to it feels good because then it's like, you know, you have a system. I wonder if I should intentionally screw up the values on the jacket a little bit to make it even more stylized because it's if I do the lighting mostly correct but blocky that'd be one thing but to like have these blocks not be correct might be interesting looking. Because I think that the overall shape of them will still read as a jacket. It's gonna look like you fucked around with the photo and edited it in Photoshop. You think so? Yeah, yeah. I don't have time to look. I only have seven minutes left. Oh god. Uh, oh. we're gonna go longer than seven <laughs> minutes. Maybe I don't know. I'm pretty close to being done. Uh, let's see. How long have I been? Oh. I had the screen. I had Discord up. Um, hour sixteen. I was. I didn't want to go past two hours. Were you trying to shoot for one a one hour study? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't. I think I've only done a one hour study once, <laughs> out of like thirty seven. Uh, actually, kind of, I think I'm on track to get it done. I might have to go a little bit over to get all this like gold filigree or whatever in there. Uh. I mean, you're uh, moving yeah, really quickly on this one. Like, you spent the first probably twenty minutes looking at. Uh... I think it was Jazz's art. Yeah. So you're you're cruising. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm like I'm feeling like this is the easiest it just about the easiest it's ever been. Cause like I've been trying to do all kinds of different subject matters and stuff, but like today I'm like I'm gonna do a close up portrait with like really simple, consistent lighting. Mm -hmm. And uh and then I'm just gonna like I'm gonna do the block in really quick. And it's just, it's on mega easy mode today. I love it. Oh God, lady, why are there so many weird gold intricate patterns on your dress? Just, uh, you gotta do the trick where you, um, you just make a little tiny brush and you just make a lot of squiggles. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get it 100%, but there's a lot of squiggles. And yeah. I've got to be in more or less the right spot. Ugh. I think I got this. I'm doing it on like a separate layer so I can just like lock the layer and like put in the values quickly. Doesn't have to be exactly right. Trying to make larger, flatter areas of painting is something I haven't been giving myself like any permission to do at all on my mainline work. I worry that like my work is just going to take longer and longer to finish with absolutely no benefit. I used to be able to finish paintings really fast. Like I was doing a painting a week for like the first year or so of Angelarium. And I did some of my best work during that time. 
And wow. looking back over those files, I mean, they're a little bit lower resolution and they're a little messier in some, I would like to clean up some spots, like some stuff seems pretty accidental, but, uh, you know, I had a higher level of economy, you know, when I was doing that. I've just gotten more and more picky about drawing in like lots of little leaves or little folds or whatever. And I don't think it's making better paintings. Yeah, there's always this fight to like not spend 20 hours making the thing like 2% better. Yeah. Yeah. Part the worst is when you like spend 20 hours to make it 2% worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what resolution do you work at, Pete? Uh, usually about 8,000 by 5,000. Okay, so it's, it's pretty, big. pretty big. But like, uh, older paintings might be as small as about 4,000 tall. But then I've got, I've got some that are like 11 or 12,000. Just because like I started out at a pretty high resolution from a scan, and then I like mm -hmm. changed the cropping on the image by expanding the canvas, and I ended up accidentally going humongous. Right. Now we're all focused. Can't talk. Can't chit chat. No bullshit. Yeah. Time to paint good. The yeah. world is watching. We're all waiting to see. Oh wait, I forgot to draw the earring. <laughs> the other earring. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I was like, damn, I'm almost done. And then I'm like, oh, I feel, I feel like an intricate earring. I haven't even started yet. Got it. Gotta make it even more squiggly. I'm running out of time. Hmm. Yeah, my my initial plans for how I was gonna do the rendering on the jacket didn't pan out. Feeling mm. I'll come back to it. Oh man, I love photo study so much. What? I love photo studies. You love them? Like me? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, bro. Why? What do you like about photo studies? That I can just turn off my brain and it can render. <laughs> 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 yeah. Same. There's always that, that mill millimeter I can fix. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, you just find some little spot where you're like, oh, that could look a little different. I just need to hit that yeah. with a brush stroke. Oh, I just need to hit that with a brush stroke. Ah, oh, that just needs a little brush stroke right there. I can smooth this down a little bit. And it's just like you find all these little things one by one and you just sort of pick your way through them. And there's like no end to it. You can just keep going if you wanted. Oh, man. Yeah. The color could look uh, a little bit more vibrant. Uh huh. We got all these people on this call and it's like dead silent because there's just like the intense concentration. You, you said, man, this is the... This is the yeah. Today's the day. Now is the moment. For you. For all of us.
yeah, I've got this, I've got like back when I was first learning how to paint, um, I realized that like whenever I was trying to finish something, there was this like a laundry list of things I knew that I need to fix or correct in some way. Diego illustrates, hey, first time chatter, welcome. And so like, um, but I didn't want to fix everything. It was like, it felt overwhelming. Cool. And so I'd be picking my way around a painting, not really making any progress. And so what I did to try to force myself to like figure out how to finish the work, I was actually putting, using the notes tool in Photoshop to make little notes for like, what was the laundry list of things I need to finish. And so that was part of my process for a little bit was like when I started getting on the tail end of the piece, I was like actually writing out a list of every single change that I needed to make in order to call the piece finished. Wow. That's a good idea. Um, yeah. And now I'm, I was just like, I just looked over the painting and I found that like, I'm still doing it, but I'm making these lists in my head. Like I'm, I, I used to have to write them down because they were uncomfortable for me to like reckon with like, Oh, I'm gonna have to touch this and then this. It's like it's all overwhelming. But now I'm so used to the process of like planning what I need to finish in order to call something done that like I uh, instinctively now make these lists in my head. Okay, done. Oh, you're done? Damn. Yep. One hour study. Good morning, Pete. Good How morning. Are you? Yeah, good. I guess it's afternoon. Shit, I you know. Yeah, it's one thirty. Well, I mean, I'm 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 maybe should eat breakfast soon or something. Yeah, you got to cook for the family, man. Nah, they already had leftover pizza. I uh, family went out to Bush Gardens yesterday. Yeah, I stayed home and worked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, they were, they're out with their uh, the kids were out with their grandma, and so I ordered uh, a pizza uh, in, and then we got leftover pizza today, and so I was like, okay, well I don't need to cook. I'm I'm just gonna have leftover nope. pizza. I'm gonna have breakfast late. Hell yeah! So um, I did my first digital painting today, and it, it went it went okay. Yeah. Dude, no shit. Well, like first digital painting, like from scratch, from like a study. What do you do? Uh, from I kind of it, from... He, he was. It's the goat. The the painting he did. It's the goat. Oh really? It's the goat. Yeah. I mean, so like, um, I'll I'll post like I've kind of worked on it a little bit, but I'll, I'll post it in like. Uh, and like dailies again on the updated one, but um, it went well. I mean, I took a very like more traditional approach. You know, Jazz showed me a bunch of like the really incredible tools uh, that like I have access to in the future. Like, uh, what was the big one? The one where you literally paint in light? Oh, I was just telling him how to use um, like blending modes to like speed up painting a bit. Uh huh. Cheat things, yeah. And he was and, like, oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty big. I don't know. I still like want to, pra like, I'd rather practice painting in volumes myself type of deal. But it's like a cool little, like, option to have for the future, which I'd never like experienced in my life, working like on on like miniatures. So like, it was it was cool. It's just new. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I feel like I'd rather like it's kind of like with traditional painting when you use mediums. Like, like, you know, with an oil painter is like using like liquid or something. Sure. You know, it like it changes. Like you're still basically using paint, but like it changes the behavior of the paint. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely very different. Uh, like, like yeah. I mean, I agree, but um, like you can't glaze in a light, right? It doesn't work because you know it's transparent, so it's showing the darkness under it. Whereas like jazz was showing me you can literally just grab and like drag and pull light across something to like get your base volumes down which is like completely fucking bonkers to me there's a lot of stuff in digital art like people are like oh in digital art you have an undo button and i'm like man if that's what you're saying about it you clearly don't know how awesome digital art is <laughs> like there is no, so yeah, much shit no. you can do that's incredible that is like physically impossible in every other medium. And it, yeah. like it makes digital like so interesting. It is very interesting. Like I said, I don't know how I feel about it though. I feel like um, there's probably room for people to rely on it. Yeah, a but bit I mean, do you much. hate fun? I mean, come on. <laughs> I don't hate, actually, I think sometimes I do think I do hate fun. Yeah. I like have a, 
terrible relationship with painting where like I pushed myself, like I was telling you, like I'm on a little break right now, or I probably pushed myself too hard with it. And I think part of me thinks it's cheating because I worked so hard to become like half decent with like painting that it feels, I was like, man, I could have been doing this the whole time on digital. What? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, here's the thing. It's like, yeah, it gives you some stuff for free, but it takes away other stuff that's free from other uh, mediums. Yeah. And then sure. on top of that, it also like, it, there's new horizons that you can reach. Yes. But you yep. don't get everything. Like you still need to like really learn a lot of stuff to, to get the most out of painting. Doing digital yeah. art is like, it gets you past certain hills, but like there are still infinite horizons beyond those hills to keep pushing and exploring. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's it's exciting. It's new. It's um, it's something that I think might improve my painting as a whole. Oh yeah. Um, I think in the long run, because I get to kind of loosen up. Um and focus on just placing the correct values instead of battling the medium, which is something we're always doing. So like, I think there's just a lot less stress involved, which will improve my overall learning experience with light. And I, I'm, I'm really excited for that actually. But yeah, I've, I, I mean, I was able to almost instantaneously pick up um, like a functional knowledge of like acrylic painting from yeah. years of doing digital. So like there's always carryover between mediums, but there's like a ton of carryover between like uh, painting in acrylic and painting in uh, digital. So like, yeah, I think that you, you're like the confidence that you have in your hand and like your knowledge of lighting and stuff is going to go through the roof if you can um, push yourself to like really try to accomplish something with digital painting. Yeah, for sure. I, I already feel like I have a better, uh, practical, like I have a better practical approach to volume relationship on this first piece than I have ever with miniature painting. Um, and I, th and I feel like it's because it's a little bit easier to push in the shadows and push in the light, right? Because I don't have to focus on like almost doing a good ground of rework. Um, and so I feel less inclined to be lazy and just let it be. And I can just go in and be like, okay, I know exactly what I need to do. I know I can change, um, you know, the opacity and I can just like work in glazes, which is something I'm super comfortable with to make everything. And that's, and that's so dope. Um, if you care, it's it's in dailies. Um, oh yeah, one second. I I'm it, I'm putting said, the final touches on my piece. Yeah, and then I'm gonna post it in dailies too. And I think one thing that's weird though, like I realized when I screenshotted it, um, it's losing a little bit of saturation in the screenshot um, for some really odd reason. Yeah, there's um there's some weird stuff with like going from like uh, inside working on the source file to like the way that stuff gets compressed will change it in ways that you don't expect. No yeah, matter I, what I'm working on, I always have to overly push the saturation at least. I, I, yeah, I, I um, the, whenever I make a, um, a version of a file for posting, well on dailies, not so much, but like I will say like, I'm probably gonna save over, I'm gonna make a correction, save over this in a second. But like, I'll take the file, if it's at web resolution, all of my final paintings, I, um, oh, this wasn't, this wasn't saved out at web resolution. So I've, I've been saving these out at like full res, but like when I save a final image, I save it at 800 pixels high using save for web so that I don't affect the source file. Then I go bring it back in and I do a sharpen I do oh. an un, I do an unsharp mask on it. That's at about a radius of about half a pixel. Because like, I mean, low resolution JPEGs just have their own look to them. And what this does is it cleans up anything that was supposed to be a sharp edge before, gets a little bit blurry, 
especially mm -hmm. like super fine details, like they get really blurry on like the baked out image. And so I do a sharpen and then I often go in and do like a level adjust. In this case, like I may bring the darks up a little bit. And so I'll do a little level adjust on it also just to make sure that I'm getting like full range of values. Cause I tend to, the way I paint tends to push everything towards the middle. And so I'll end up like juicing the contrast and sharpness in the final JPEG and then I'll resave that. And that's the one that actually yeah. goes out. But I have yeah, to do I'm those processes on the low res JPEG after it's gone out the door because it's, um, you know, that's the part where I'm actually concerned about it. Now, when you do look at this, when you, if, um, ignore the horns the horns are like i, I really struggled with, with even drawing the horns in like a reasonable perspective so um i'm just gonna do a couple corrections here real quick to like and then shadows i should increase fix a couple of little minor things see if there's any last second cleanup on anything really and then this is going to be cool. you know contrast brightness one fast one. fast one today just like that. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that's what I'm uh no. That's not what I'm looking at. Kill the saturation. So uh there's a question about my brushes. Diego Illustrates was asking about my brushes. You can find my brushes. On, uh, on my website, vandalhide.com. I've got a digital artist resources section there and it's like got information about software, hardware, as well as link to um, my tool presets, which is like how I share my brushes. And it's all free, it's just available for download. I The list of brushes is like seven, <laughs> I have seven brushes that I have on my tool palette that I use for everything. Uh, and they are not fancy by design. I keep things really, really simple. Oh, wow. Oh, you like... know what I meant to do today is I actually meant to go and dip into Ash's brushes because I've been meaning to try out Ash's brushes because they're way more exotic than mine. I've been curious about what it would look like. I don't know, no matter how I play with this, when I post it and I view it on my computer, it's like dry as a fucking desert from the saturation perspective. It's fucking flat. Uh, so I don't know. what I would Whatever. do is I bring that JPEG back into Photoshop or whatever you're working on it, juice the saturation and then re and then resave it. Okay. Is so weird. Um, it, what I find uh, when posting stuff online, it's either saturation levels or if you're working on layers and you have a desaturated background, sometimes I will saturate only the foreground figure so that the background is wow push up into the foreground. Um, so that it stays, you know. But yeah, that's that's just how that all. Whatever, it's fine. I don't care. I'm not. It's just not that much. <laughs> I don't. I don't fucking care. Uh, you can't tell anybody that I care because no, I don't oh, fucking sorry. care. No God, not like that. I just meant like <laughs> I've, I've I've like bumped the saturation, reposted like four times, and I feel like everyone's just like watching it happen, and it's just annoying. So I'm just not gonna. Oh, I it. I've actually done that many times where I posted my daily. I got reactions, and I looked at it on my second monitor because like my Discord's on like the the monitor to the right, and the contrast is different. And I go ooh, and I like I go and I open up the file again, and I resave it, and then I I delete the old post and I post it again. Yep, I don't know. It's fine. Like the co see, color doesn't matter to me, so whatever. Uh, like I care more, a little bit more, just about the general. Like, ha ha is it readable? And the answer is yes. So I don't care. <laughs> oh, save! Someone said, 
saving for web and should try the save for web feature. Okay, if, if that's an option on Krita, I'll try it. But I don't know if Oh, that's... yeah, does Krita have save for web? Um, uh, I have no idea. I so like jazz. Like you're oh. working on a you're working on a painting that is uh, 4,000 pixels high, but you want to post a JPEG that's 800 pixels high, and you're in Krita. What do you do? Uh, I usually just, like, do it, like, the dumb manual way. Like, I save, like, a, um, like, like I save my, like, source version. Like, I call it, like, the source file or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then what I'll do is I will, um, there's sort of two options for like resizing your canvas. Um, one of them will like resize the canvas while leaving all the pixels in the image the same. So it'll be like a different crop basically. Um, and the other one sort of like constrains the proportions while you like change the size of the whole image. Um, I'll scale the image down uh, and then just like save it as a JPEG and label it like web res or whatever. So you'll, you'll save out, you'll make a, a new file. Yeah. Uh, so you like save save as to make a copy, and then you will yep. fuck with that file. Yep. Yeah. That's definitely a good. Uh, that's a decent option. That's a little fiddly, but it's like it's a better option than like the the default obvious way is to re um, resize your source file, save it, and then undo, and then save it again, and like. I have watched professional artists lose their source files to that in a work environment. <laughs> no oh way. God. Yeah, by just like hitting a hotkey by accident halfway through that process and then say no to the dialog box that pops up and the dialog box is like like do you want to do you want to save? And they're like no. And then it's like okay, bye. And then like mm -hmm. their <laughs> their file is like their source file is now permanently low res. Like, uh, it the it, the in Photoshop they have an option to um, say like choose like a bunch of parameters for how the file is going to be saved out, and including in that is the um, resolution. And so you can just like never have to like uh, change your source file resolution ever, and be able to make a web res JPEG. And every time I do it, it like complains like uh, on these on like my my actual source files, it throws an error every single time I do it, and complains that I'm uh, I'm working at like an uh, unsupported resolution because the file's too big. And it's Weird. like oh, it might slow down your computer. I'm like, maybe work good Photoshop. It's fine. Like this is like normal sized files. It's okay. Okay, I think I'm done. Sweet. Um, so yeah, let's see. Boop boo number, is this 38? 38. Easy, I barely, uh, the only problem is I don't feel like I learned anything this time. I just felt like I showed up, I got painting done for the day and I like don't, I feel like I'm I'm like now like cementing in like certain work processes and methods, like trying to like develop a little bit of a style for these. Okay, dailies, I'm gonna post my thing. I'm gonna take a look at yours, Jay. Boom. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in the dailies. These are, are these really dailies in some cases, though? I feel like people are just using this to post all their latest work. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fake ass daily. Okay, Jay. Oh, the goat. I just wanted to answer them. <laughs> fake ass dailies. You need to set some damn rules. <laughs> we gotta set some rules. We gotta start reinforcing and be like, kicking people's posts out, be like, it's not a daily. Yeah, not, not, if you wanna be barely. part of the turbo team. No. <laughs> So you got your goat I here. It should be like a yeah, I got I got my here goat. Yeah, like I said, ignore the horns. Those are garbage. I don't. 
<laughs> I'm not a drawer, so I don't know how to fucking do perspective on horns. Jazz had to show me, and I was like, you know, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I just... Well, here's horns. the thing is, like, you're trying to draw the horns where it's like... Horns are tough because they curve in two directions simultaneously. They're curving around this way, but they're also curving around this way. Yep. So the curve that it's following is like changing over the length of it. So you have to like think about, are you like, okay, well the highlight's here and then it's so sort of like falling off as you go through the length of the horn in either direction here, but also around this way. And yeah. it's like doing that in a consistent way across the length of the whole horn is a pain. Yeah, tough. I didn't even like really attempt to paint it. I got down like some like very basic. Is this is this your original it. monster design? No, no, this is actually. Hold on, let me shout her out because oh, it's Irish Compier. Okay. Um, I just I traced it loosely, and then I just I was like, you know, I'm gonna test my. I I say all the time that I was gonna be a better a painter on digital than I was a drawer. And I was like, let me see if I'm bullshitting myself. And I was like, no, like, this is okay. <laughs> so it's just. Well, it's awesome to see you, you've got a piece done and that you got it posted. Now, uh, like, I have a feeling you are going to be, if you can keep up with this and just do it, like, uh, even if you're just doing one of these a week, I have a feeling that you're going to really quickly feel like you can just like dash past this point. You're going to be learning so fast that you're going to have a hard time keeping up. Um, yeah. In terms of uh, horns, I once had to draw a whole comic with it. <laughs> with all the horn guys? <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the, the main thing with that is if you just play with shapes like as a warm up, e even five, 10 minutes um, on a regular. Eventually, the shape language of how certain forms turn in space, it just gets kind of intuitive, you know, even without a perspective. Or anything. Um, um, I demoed a technique for drawing yeah. symmetrical forms in perspective um, for Jay. Do you want me to, like, show that to people? Because there's actually a really easy way to draw, like, horns from, like, any angle. Uh, I'm, I'm going to log out in a few minutes. Um, oh, okay. but, right. um, no, I mean, if you want to make that, write that down as a tutorial, I will help you get it out to more people. Oh, okay. All right. Um, uh, did you, so do you finish your study? Can you, did you post it in dailies? Uh, it's in the chat in the stream. Gotta post it in dailies. All right. All right. Post it in the dailies. Uh, I'm opening it. In the but yeah, I, also. this was this was a lot of fun. I really, um, I got to be honest. I think I'm actually like in love with painting on digital. Uh, yeah, I, well, that's my whole point. I'm trying to tell everybody like painting is hard, but like digital painting is like super fun and like a lot easier than I think people realize. Like it's just yeah, it's really it's fun to fuck around. It, it took away all of the stress. Um, even like even even without using the fancy tools that I had access to, um, like just doing what I always do on digital just felt incredible. I mean, just truly something special. It's it is um, it's it's super fucking fun. All right, and, so yeah, we got I've got Adams and oh Adam posted like low resolution, super low resolution. Yeah, that's what I was asking you what res you work in. I'm having fun working in like 500 by 300. Oh, I can't <laughs> bear it because like I want to zoom in and fix stuff and like I never want to see that pixel grid show up ever. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's just, that's for me. So, uh, you know, like, okay. So like I was going to talk to Jazz about painting real quick. But at the beginning of this, we had a started conversation about, you know, maybe you should learn how to paint. Um, Jazz. How you feel like it went today? Like, what was your feeling about the study? Um, I'm happy with how it went. I've done a lot of like studies of like people's anime speed paintings, and I was able to like use a lot of those techniques to like blow through this pretty fast. Like, you were kind of telling me like, "Wow, there's a lot going on." Like, I don't know if you'll be able to like do it all in time, but like, I've I've kind I kind of have some experience with like how do you make like complicated fil or the illusion of like complicated filigree. Yeah. Uh, 
So like, I just used that stuff. Um, and I'm happy. With, I'm happy with that face. I was expecting the face to be like a train wreck. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not. It's not too bad. Um, it kind of reads like a face. Oh uh, yeah, um, it reads like a face. Um, you know what? I would like to see you practice on the next study. Is like I want to see you dig deeper on learning how to like do more complicated transitions. Like, okay. uh, because like a, one of the things about this reference image is that there's like these big color fields where it's like the white part of the dress, the red part of the dress. They're like miles apart from each other in terms of value. And so you're able to, you've done an amazing job like getting like this sense of detail established like really loosely and it, it looks excellent. But like for the pursuit of like trying to learn how to like comfortably just push stuff around as like as like blobs of paint and like learn that how to like sort of control different subtle transitions in value like you've skipped all that part like the the place in the painting where the most of that is happening is in the face and instead of like you know defining like the subtle differences, like trying to figure out like, how do you get the high, highest highlight to be up here on the cheek? And then you have a slightly lower highlight on the jaw. And then you have an even lower highlight on like the, like, you know, second twist of skin on the side of the cheek. It's like getting those three things at like different levels and transitioning between them in a way that like, they all read like the peaks of them all read in the right places and like they like you know that in some cases you're going to get these really tight folds while other ones are going to move much more smoothly and long across the face like that's what i'm talking about when i'm talking about like painting like and um that's the thing i think you haven't really you know dived into yet i'm trying to figure out if do dove in is a word you haven't dove into it yet and you've you've done a little tiny bit of like rendering here, but you have like, you've simplified it so that you don't need to address those kinds of complications. And you've simplified it in a way that like, um, you know, you, you've only done like a little nod to the rendering in parts to make some of the tran like softer transitions. But um, you know, you're, you picked a reference image that's allowed you to dodge the subject. <laughs> 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 so I I think like th I I think that you're showing off like a lot of your like best skills here and it's cool to see how they're moving like how like you know your your talent for complicated line art is being used to address like all this filigree and stuff because the way I break things down this is like a multi-step process that is incredibly time consuming and you've managed to like you know just leapfrog over it in a way that is like really elegant and nice so it's cool to see that like you're and that you're like your drawing skills are like able to be applied in these like for something it's like a photo study in a way that's like really accomplishing the goals like your artistic goals like elegantly so like uh you know you've got this suite of skills that's like really strong and like allows you to do all these really amazing things but like I want to see you push on the stuff where you're really weak because I think you're going to make really fast work of it. <laughs> like I, I think like the, you know, you're the, the amount of art you've made had and like the amount of stuff you've looked at is going to allow you to intuit this, your way through that problem at like hyperspeed. If you just can get past the part where you like feel uncomfortable about stinking at it at first. I don't think it's going to be more than a week or so of you like pushing on studies and like, you know, and like trying to work up personal pieces with a different method to like really have like, you know, enter into new territory and like build a new skill set that you're going to pile on top of your existing skills. So yeah, maybe. No, that you can do. It. I mean, you've got plenty of time today. If you you got nothing else going on, I'm gonna bust out of here. I've got other things I need to do because I've been playing too many video games instead of taking care of like my essential business stuff. Um, what have you been playing? I've been playing Dyson Sphere Program. They 
space. It's a, one of these autism simulators. It's like a space factory <laughs> thing. And like my Dyson sphere is half assembled and like I'm not producing enough antimatter to be able to get like my, the final tier of research done very quickly. And it's driving me absolutely crazy. Um, cause everything I've built so far is like horrible spaghetti, but, and so I'm just wasting hours and hours and hours on it. And I like, cause I'm like so close, I feel like I'm close to beating it. So I'm like, I'll just, I'll just push through and beat it and then I'll be done and I'll get back to my email. And I've got like 50 fucking emails in my inbox. <laughs> just like losing like whole halves of days to it. It's like a, a thing I haven't done in a long time. So it's not worrying me yet, but I'm like, I'm gonna, I need to figure out like, where do I, where do I slide out of gremlin mode back into like adult, adult mode. Uh, and so I'm like trying to put a fine line down today to like get there. But yeah. Good luck. Uh, thank you. It's going to be tough. Um, I wanted to make a closing statement before you wrap up here. Peter. Oh, I, I just want to look at Adam's thing. I just want to say, Adam, I think oh, your, yeah, your yeah, study no. is really cool. It's like you, your style, like, I mean, like you have a style that comes through so naturally. So that it's like really interesting to see you do a photo study because it feels like, I don't know how much you were intending to try to make a style. Like it, it kind of just resolved that way. Like I would make a decision that felt bad and then I'd do one that felt good and that kind of sort of gravitated towards that it's so cool that like you you have this really really easy like path of like hey even if i'm drawing from a photo it still looks like one of my paintings like what a gift <laughs> what a what an amazing thing to have because <laughs> there's so many people i like ask me like how do you develop a style and i'm like i do not fucking know i think you just have to be yourself and like yeah. you know you are not struggling with that at all so it's like it's that's that's a that's an awesome thing to have. It's very cool to see you do it. And like, I wonder like if you, you know, would uh, like, I, you, I know you're struggling with like the efficiency of your painting and stuff. I wonder if like you'd try this out a little bit alongside me and like maybe put an hour into it a day, just to, like do some photo studies. I wonder if these even like actually play on social media. So maybe you need to do a higher resolution, but like, yeah, this looks like a pretty, this is a pretty cool looking post. <laughs> it's a pretty cool looking painting. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, well, I'm having a lot of fun with these. Well, I had fun with this one, and I think I'll, uh, I'm will i going to try to show up and, and do these alongside with you because I think it'll be a good op excuse to have a kind of accountability to show up and, and actually knock these out. I mean, I've been showing up. I was doing them on Discord. Now I'm doing them on Twitch. I'm showing up and doing these dailies every single day. The invite is open to everyone to go ahead and do that and like um, do it alongside the community. If for no other reason that it's fun to hang out and paint and do studies, like, I mean, that was sort of the resounding impression from everyone in the chat today was like, damn, studies are pretty fun. I looked at yours and I looked back at mine and I'm like, oh no, I should like learn how to, I should build, I should have built more atmosphere or something in here. It's not cool enough. Not, 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 a, not Adam level cool. Dude, Shit. I just, I just stole your word. I stole your, uh, you, you wanted, you said yourself that you wanted to resist <laughs> your, your tried and true strategy. You not only did that, but you did a bunch of like st made a bunch of stylistic choices that I thought were like added to the overall atmosphere of the piece. It's very cool. Uh, and you're cheating. I, I resent I am, I am cheating. I did cheat. I'm going to get, I'm, man, I'm scared. I, I, I promise though, I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going to take the training wheels off and give me a week. Oh wait. Yeah. You traced, you were a tracer yeah. today too. Okay. Yeah, I'm a dirty, I'm a filthy tracer. Don't, okay. don't let that fool you. All I'm right. A, I'm, I'm now I'm dude. pumping myself back up. Like, you know, yeah. yeah, your, your work is worthless <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, it bears no merit and I don't think anybody should enjoy it. Uh, no, that, I don't, it, I don't think they should. Yeah. On that note, Dustin, good. what do you have to say? <laughs> oh yeah yeah i just uh wanted to because I, I remember who was it wanted to do some tutorial ish content that's something that yes was it like hey can i do want... a tutorial and i'm like yes i would like <laughs> we want dustin and i want tutorials to like be pushing out on social media through like a huckleberry branded thing that YouTube channel has been created, by the way. Oh, yeah. There's a YouTube channel, but then I also want on social media to be, like, posting images of tutorials and stuff that, like, come from the Huckleberry community, like, community members making stuff. I want to be making stuff. And so in addition to doing studies, I want to, like, actually start, like, making really smaller, bite-sized, more digestible, like, instructional stuff. So anybody who wants to uh, work on that alongside of me and, like, make things, uh, I'm going to do my best, like, to 
sort of accumulate all the signal boosting that I'm putting into this along with other community members to see if we can like all kind of collectively uh, speak about our education in a way that we are all signal boosting each other. Um, so yeah, uh, some things I, I did want to point out for the tutorial stuff mm -hmm. is if you need my help with editing and it's a relatively short video, I should be able to help out there. Um, but I do want to be able to keep my job. So if I'm <laughs> editing, editing tutorials for like five different people on top of like cutting down pizza VODs that might uh, limit me a little bit. Um, but if they are pretty short, I definitely, I, I feel like I should be able to make time for that. And the last thing I did want to say is uh, for this live on Twitch channel, someone did point out that they wanted to get in. Um, yeah, like Subu wanted to get in. But if you're if you're going to be deafened for an extended period of time, I, I might have to move you well, yeah. to the waiting room you, for streams. Yeah, you're going to get booted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to uh, that that puts us at two hours, so I'm definitely comfortable to log out and actually look at my email for the first time this week. It's Friday. I should probably open my email. <laughs> 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 I've been you go a whole week I, without checking. No, email. that is not typical. I'm usually in there multiple times a day. I have been like I think the excitement of these streams has like left me in a place where I have like very little executive function left over afterwards and I have been playing way too much Dyson Sphere and it's getting <laughs> it's turning into a problem. Like it's it's getting bad. So I'm gonna uh, I'm, today I'm gonna make a concerted effort to be a better a uh, better person overall. All right. But yeah, uh, oh. and then Dustin's posting in the chat. We, we got the portfolio reviews coming up uh, next Friday. So the going forward, the Friday streams, we might end up doing a sort of like community review slash portfolio review stream where it's me like looking at stuff along with other artists in the community and reacting to it. Like um, people want to have their art seen. They want to get feedback. Like Fridays are going to be the days where that's going to happen. Right now we're calling them weekly portfolio reviews. I'm probably going to end up renaming that. It's like not really about looking at people's portfolios so much as it is like, hey, people want to have their art seen and they want to have their art featured and we want to facilitate that. So Fridays are going to be those days going forwards. So I might skip Friday studies in, in favor of doing uh, those sort of review streams, like art artist reacts. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're going to call it. Um, but yeah, so uh, feel free to like go on the, if you're on Twitch, uh, go into the Discord and um, you can post your portfolio uh, or link to your portfolio in there and, um, you know, RSVP for the uh, Friday stream next Friday and we'll be uh, looking over stuff and maybe your stuff is going to be on the stream and I can give you whatever feedback you want on it because that's like something I would love to do. All right, that's it. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Pete.